Hello, Darren. How are you? I'm well, sir. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, first class. You graduated first class. Um, engineer. What what part of engineer? I'm computer engineer. This is your first time on camera, actually. You're yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Computer engineering. Yeah. First class from mm -hmm. uh, one of the UK's top. Yeah, University, University of Kent, Canterbury. Amazing. Yes, so why? What happened? What what led you to that? Um, I've I've always been a techie person. I've always um, been someone who liked to break apart electronics and building their back up again and finding solutions to things, which is one of the main purposes of an engineer, to find solutions to things. So that's what led me into computer engineering in the first place. When you were in uni, you did some projects as well, building yeah. some stuff up and got it. Um, in, the, in my first year, I did a robotics project. Um, it was like a competition in the uni, and I got, um, I think, a second place in your uni. Well, the first place was a Chinese guy, so I guess I had no. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but yeah, did that. And in my last year, I also did another robotics project, which, um, yeah, built an actual robot, and I got a first class in that. So, amazing. Yeah. So, let's rewind a little bit. You came to the nation family at the age of 14. I did it 14. 14. Yes, I remember you with your mom. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not more of I came, it's more of I was dropped. <laughs> dropped in the open. Yeah, yeah. You, could, yeah, you were dropped with, with mm -hmm. me or with the nation, with what is Spark? Yeah, Spark Ministries back then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, let, let's say the gap of. Uh, the, 10 years plus, or no. close to 15 yeah, years. Yeah, so, 15 years. Yeah. What have you learned in those years of being around the nation family? Um, well, before I can go into what I've learned, or uh, um, well, if you don't mind me maybe pointing out what pointing out. I I would say I got from joining the family. Yeah. So I lost my dad when I was very young. So having a father was something I never had. So I never knew what it meant to have a father. So I think what drew me to you 15 years ago now is the fact that I now have someone who can take the place of a father in my life mm. and show me directions and how to do things. Mm. Back to what I learned, I would say I've learned how to love people, mm. which was something that was never shown or taught whilst I was growing up in, in Nigeria. Yeah, so yeah. I, I wanted to come to that. So yeah. you actually grew up in Nigeria to the age of about... Yeah, well, to the age of 13. 13. Yeah. So it wasn't that you were born here. No. You you had to struggle to, to have papers yeah. to go to school, school yeah. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And yeah. still came out of university mm -hmm. grade. Yeah. You were living up around Battersea yeah. at that yeah. time. Yeah. And I think one of the things that stands out to me is what it could have been. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't come at 14, you looking back now, you're a grown man now. What would life have been? What do you think life would have been? Uh, I can certainly say I'm not going to be here sitting today because, I mean, if I go back and reflect on the environment I grew up in in Nigeria, mm. people from those areas don't tend to, I would say, live long mm. um, or maybe end up in the street, mm. which I would say I was when, when I was growing up in Nigeria. I was on the street for like at a very young age. Mm. A lot of people didn't know that. I didn't have a dad. Yeah. All my uncles back then were also on the street, so yeah. yeah. yeah so, so it's going to be a natural progression. Yeah, it's going to be a natural, yeah. So um, I went, even when I came here, my mom was pretty much like a single mother. Mm -hmm. she, she was working about three jobs, mm -hmm. day and night, so she wasn't really around. Yeah. So I think I would have ended up making new friends in the UK mm -hmm. and ending up on the street because I have no one to to be accountable to and no one to give me guidance. So yeah. yes, I think it was good that. I knew at the age that uh, I did. Mm. Yeah. So you you grew through all that. I think you were shielded from the streets mm -hmm. and, and yeah. all those stuff. But then there must be something that keeps you going um, when you were in uni, especially in the days when you wanted to go uni because I remember the story, but you couldn't because yeah, of papers. Might, yeah, papers yeah. Uh, uh, does papers mm -hmm. mean documentation to stay in the country yeah. and all that? Uh, what kept you going? What, what, what were you thinking at the time? Um, wasn't thinking much, but what really kept me going is obviously what I've learned from yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't give up and everything is possible because I know back then, even when I was young, knowing you, I'm, I'm always saying, oh, this is, this is impossible. Oh, no, we can't do this. And you'll be like, no, don't tell me that. Mm -hmm. Everything is possible. So. For me, even not having papers or not being able to go to uni, I've just always felt that me finishing uni is a possibility, it's something that can be made possible, so that kept me going. And even 
getting first class, I, I wouldn't say I was the smartest person, but something tells me that it is possible for you to get a first class. Mm. Yeah, so it's, I think it's the teachings that I've got from you over the years mm. and the fact that you don't give up and when you start something, you finish it. Mm. So yeah, I think that's, those are the things that kept me going. I saw you carrying um, instruments, you know, we used to carry <laughs> instruments or yeah. um, instruments, uh, musical stuff. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I don't know what we call that, <laughs> electrical stuff for church. church then. Yeah. And then you're still doing the same thing, but on a bigger level. Yeah. You've created stuff, a yeah. company that runs this old media stuff now. Yeah. Um, lessons in metamorphosis, meaning that mm. Um, what would you say you've learned in the growth process, seeing something lead to becoming big? How does that resonate to you personally? Um, I think if I were to go back again, um, my love for media came about when I came to the nation because, as I said, I have always loved tech, mm. not media. Yeah. But when I came into the nation, there was a necessity for someone to plug one speaker back then, just just one speaker. And obviously now we can't even imagine the scale of speakers we need to plug to run a service. Yeah. So I think having to watch something grow from that level to what it is now is, is something that I wouldn't have learned if I wasn't around. Mm. It's something that I wouldn't have witnessed. Mm. and. It shouldn't give me the kind of desire that I have in life now. Yeah. Because now I now know that something can be built. What desire do you have in life now? Um, well, the desire is, I now know that we can build something. I now know that black people can own something. Yeah. Because those are things that I would never have thought about. Mm. Yeah, I would never have thought that as black people, we can even have a media company. And I'm not talking about it, but anyone can have a major company. Oh, yeah. But the desire now is there are big companies out there, mm. like we've got the Marvels, we've got the Disney, yeah. and we've not gone into that level yet. Yeah. But the desire is to get there because we need to now have our own thing. Mm. And as I said, when I came to the nation, we had one speaker. Yeah. Now we have multiple speakers. Yeah. In 10 years' time, I'm I'm 100 percent sure we're going to be at the same level as Disney. You've you've yeah. created a, a Shepherd Media. Yeah. Um, it's done hundreds of thousands in revenues. You've done um, productions upon productions. So it's not just the speaker yeah. thing. Yeah. It's seeing it grow from that one speaker to what you've created right. yeah. now. You you lead Shepherd Media would have at least how many people working with you? Um, I think we have about. Um, 15 people across all um yeah. across all categories of media okay. so yeah so because we don't just focus on um the sound production part of things we also have cinematographer animators obviously the sound um production part of things as well mm. and um, social media management and things like that so we are covering the whole um everything to do with media so if you're leading 15 people what would you say is the number one lesson in leadership that you've learned over the years love and patience is it? Yeah. Now that's amazing. Yeah. So, a young guy watching from Africa trying to build a media company or trying to be something in life without fatherhood. Yeah. Um, mom is busy because mom has to bring food to the table. What would you look at a 14 year old you and tell them? What would you say? Um, I would say they should find someone who is achieved something in life and attach himself to that to that person okay. because. Um, as I've said, for me, I never have anyone to to look up to or to say, okay, I want to follow this person. Most people that I've looked up to, they're not into media, but I've seen them succeed in what they do. So me having those people around has always given me that that spirit of, okay, I can succeed in wherever I put my hands in as well. So even if it's media, find someone who you would say, okay, all right, this person is, is accomplished in X, Y, Z, and I want the same thing attach yourself to it and just follow and be patient and let time do its thing. Wow. Yeah. Now that's inspiring. First class computer engineer from the University of Kent, build, uh, building a Shepherd Media, which is into media and many other things. See, his love and patience is what he's learned. The same things grow from little to big, 
um, challenges, serious challenges, and his papers still fought through until he got through first class in university. I think that is inspiring to see people like this in our community. Again, the gist of the nation family is to say that nothing is actually impossible, that if a community can achieve something at a certain age, we are more than well able to achieve this. And that's why I bring you stories like this. They are real life stories. Thank you, Dari, for being here today. Thank, thank you, you so very much. Thanks for having me, sir. Thank you. God bless you all and thank you for watching this. Thank you.